Hello everyone. Welcome to Mind Speak on Health Global. I am Samik Sen. Joining us today Rob, the talented Indian artist, content creator and TV personality and also the former host of Mad on Pogo TV. Okay, so Rob tell me like you know from Mad series to YouTube channel, how has the journey been like? Um honestly like the journey has been very very uh interesting and very eventful. Um it wasn't an easy one there were lots of ups and downs if i can say so uh, there were a lot of learnings uh, there was a lot of learning on the job because television and digital they are two completely different worlds of course i'm i'm very happy uh, that i got an opportunity to experience both and i absolutely love both uh, both the worlds or both the spaces um because one is you know very structured and planned like television is very very structured and planned like you have to yeah. plan uh, in advance like months in advance uh, get permissions from the channel um, you know you can't play around with the format but digital is very very spontaneous you know it's very fluid um and uh, you have a lot more control on what you want to do like with my pages and with my channels now i can put up whatever i want i can play around with the format um uh, but when i decided that i'll start creating uh, content for the digital spaces you know i had to unlearn a lot to learn how this works because like okay. i said television is very very different so it was a lot of learning on the job but um, but it's exciting i think that's the most important part that you know you can continue to sort of, of keep learning and i i get excited with that so i really enjoyed every aspect of it every bit of it and it's been a very very happy journey because from television to now digital i have built this really amazing community of, uh, of like minded people of creative people so very true. so yeah it's been wonderful so first of all how did television happen it was always there in the cards no 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 when i was studying i studied animation film making but at that time i never imagined that i will have my own show um and i'll create uh, a content for an audience obviously i wanted to create content but i had always envisioned myself being behind the camera uh, i wanted to make films i wanted to make uh, animation films and shows and series so when i finished my um animation film making course at nid i moved to bombay and i was working with an animation studio there and because i was designing a lot of content for television channels for kids channels i got a, a, a i got a call from pogo because i had designed content for a competitive channel i had designed okay. content for hangama and then pogo got in touch with me and they said we would like to meet you so when i went there i was under the impression that they would want me to create um, animated content for them but i soon realized that they wanted someone to not only create content but also be in front of the camera and because i had zero experience of being in front of the camera i politely said no and i left but um, oh. i guess yeah okay uh, but uh, but they I, i guess they liked my work or they liked my personality or they liked something in me i mean or they saw some potential in me that i didn't know existed so they insisted that i come back and give an audition and then i um, i i long story short i said yes and i said okay i'll come and see you guys i made a lot of excuses that let me write my own script and i can't learn lines and things like that because honestly i was doing well in the animation space and being in front of the camera was a completely new space for me so i didn't want to take that up because you know i could have miserably failed so i said uh, no but then i but i decided okay let me take it take this up as a challenge and i did um and yeah i i, I got the part and then i started uh, creating the show but i was very very fortunate that when i joined i told them this will only work if you will give me um you know the creative freedom to do what i want okay. to do you know and i'm like i said i'm so lucky that they they let me do what i wanted to do i could uh, design what i wanted to design i could make what i wanted to make or what i was good at uh, i could play around with the format a little bit um and i guess because of that um, the show did well and everyone loved it and accepted it and i got the opportunity to make more of it sure it must have been a game changer for you Oh absolutely initially i i didn't understand you know um obviously i i took this up as a big opportunity like i faced a lot of challenges growing up when i wanted to pursue art as a career 
um you know and i come from a middle class family so my parents also wanted me to become a doctor like everyone wants their kids to become engineer oh. doctors so my parents wanted me to become a doctor being a good son i was i was studying like i was a science student i was preparing for my medical entrances and then i decided to get into art so i know how difficult and challenging it was for me to first of all pursue art as a career um and then try and do what i was passionate about you know so i knew there'll be many people like me you know sitting in remote parts of our country and maybe around the world who want someone to show them the way or you know um and i thought okay this is a great opportunity to not only showcase what i can do but also help mm. others and show them that you know art is not just a hobby you know you can make it a a, a lucrative career choice you know so yeah that's the 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 episodes were also planned like they were thematic like each episode i would do a new thing like it was animation to photography to sculptures to print making so that anyone who has any interest in any of these fields will get a little bit of a sort of a, a exposure or a introduction to that space and might uh, use my show or my work an example to convince their parents or so, just encourage them and push them to you know do that so yes it was a big opportunity okay so mad stuff with rob so please tell us more about it yeah mad stuff with rob is my youtube channel um after doing a a, a decade of television i decided that i should start my digital journey and mad stuff with rob was when i started that um i can say it's an extension of my show or what i do i realized that you know anyone and everyone who was watching me as a kid after a decade had become a young adult and was consuming a lot of digital content so i thought is only wise that i step into that space too and start creating content that they are consuming i also realized that there was a a, a lack of you know uh, diy content or creative content that was coming from from india like from people they could relate to you know a face they could relate to um and honestly i started doing diy when diy term was not even coined like at least in india it wasn't part of your um, daily or common vocabulary True. like even on the show we were contemplating i mean diy term existed but we were like will people understand that diy stands for do it yourself um anyone on the show when we used to make things or the projects that we were doing we used to call them makes you know so when uh, my digital journey started when mswr which is my mad stuff and rob channel started we realized that now people have access to other creators also internationally and a lot of people of were doing diy content so i wanted to create diy content that was coming from india because one of the reasons even why my television show did well was because the kind of techniques i was using in the materials that i was using like if they watched an international show and they had used certain uh, materials or tools the kids here or uh, won't have access to that and i would only use stuff that is available around so um so yeah on the on the channel i started making a lot of uh, simple projects diy projects projects that they could do over a period of days like a weekend project of sorts or do like simple ones that they could easily do in like 5 minutes to 10 minutes there were a lot of hacks there were a lot of um, experimenting with techniques and the advantage like i said earlier with the youtube channel was that i had a lot of control like tv was so planned and the format was so set that if i had to make a small change i had to send in emails to hong kong where i had offices was but here with youtube i could change the format if i felt it wasn't working or if if my audience said oh we love this video and what you're doing here i could do more of that and started as a series so i could play around it was a lot more flexible and spontaneous sure. even the connection i had with my audience was a lot more uh, intimate you know so i started enjoying that space and um, we ended up building like this amazing community of creative people and uh, and i engage with them and interact with them on a daily basis um and it has helped me grow and evolve as an artist too because now i can cater to their needs so your work is so creative from where do you get such ideas thank you thank you so much for the kind words um i don't know man like i i honestly do what i like you know i i really enjoy making things i get joy from making things and um uh, i just stick to that i like i make stuff and i think why it has worked or it looks unique or it looks interesting is um you know growing up 
I, like I said, I come from a middle class family. So growing up, my parents were very particular about what toys I can buy. Um, and no expensive toys, right? So, so there were times that my friends would have these really cool toys and cars and jeeps okay. and superhero figurines and things like that. And if I couldn't have it, I was like, what can I do uh, so that, you know, I can also enjoy this. And I started creating my own. Like I would, if I had to make like a Jeep or a car or something, I would take cardboard boxes and, and make it. It didn't look exactly like the original toy, but I was very happy because I had made it. So there was like a sense of accomplishment, you know. Uh, I started valuing it a lot more because I had spent so much time and effort into making it. It helped me build my imagination. You know, so I took that as sort of like the foundation for what I do. I know that a lot of people uh, want certain things. And when uh, we make those things ourselves, it gives us, you know, confidence. It helps with our concentration and things like that. And like I said earlier, when I use certain materials that are available, it just encourages them and pushes them to try it out. They don't feel intimidated. So, so yeah, like, I mean, inspiration is around us. There are so many materials. There's so many ideas around us. I just keep picking up things and I try and pick up unusual things. And then I try and see how I can break it down and dissect it to the most simplest form so that people are not intimidated by either the tools or the materials or the techniques and they want to give it a shot too. And I try and make the process fun and entertaining. So I think it's a combination of all of that that makes the content look interesting and unique. Um, so yeah, I just get inspiration from what is around me. Okay. Rob, you have spent close to a decade in the online space. Okay, and there is so much of content, okay, and that we are consuming. So as a content creator, how do you maintain a niche? Yeah, that's a very interesting question. Um, I think it's important to stick to what you do uh, and stay true to yourself. Like I know, um, I know art is my DNA. Like that's what I do. Um, and I just play around, play around, uh, you know, and experiment. Yeah, honestly, I feel that, you know, yeah, it's very it's very important. There are a lot of like, I've seen creators, what they do is there are so many trends that come up, you know, there are new, new platforms. So they keep, they keep changing what they create. Like they keep changing their content. Like if comedy is working, then they'll start making comedy content. If dance videos are working, they'll start doing that. You know, um, I also have evolved as an artist and I know my art has also transformed uh, oh. over the time but I still try and stay true to what I do uh, even if I have to pick up a trend I try and twist it and I try and make it my own you know so if I have to introduce comedy I try and do it in a way where art is still the highlight and the focus so that my audience knows that if they are coming to my my channel my page they will get exactly what they have come there for and that's very important because then you create a bond you know with your audience that uh, you know they'll always remember so i think that is very important and that's what i've done over, over time like i have only created um, content that is not only educational but also informative also entertaining um, and it's all packaged in um, like uh, an envelope of art and that's okay. why like you know uh, i could figure out uh, and there is, as you can see, there's a big need and demand for art. Like everyone loves art. Like Picasso said that every child is an artist. You can't remain when, when you grow up, right? So everyone wants to do it. Like when I do corporate events and stuff and I give them simple exercises, they go like, wow, I suddenly felt like I'm 10 years old or I'm 14 years old and I'm doing art. So they get excited, um, you know, when they create art. So that's very important. So I've stuck to art and uh, build a whole community around it. Okay, so please tell us about your DJ Wale Babu project with Bacha. How was the experience and like, you know, how was he to work with? <laughs> uh, it was a very, very entertaining uh, project. It was a lot of fun. So uh, uh, at that time, Sony Music used to manage me as an artist and used to also manage Bacha as an artist. And Bacha had just released his new song, which was DJ Wale Babu and was doing really well. Okay. And we were just sitting and we, we were talking, like I said, um, you know, um, I like to experiment and we were talking about doing some music videos and stuff. And uh, somebody asked me, I think maybe someone from uh, Bhatshah's team, they said, would you like to do a music video for him? And I said, yeah, but if I do a music video, I'll have to introduce art in it and Bhatshah will have to do some, 
you know, playing with paints and colors. And they were very kicked about that idea and I was very kicked too. So I said, okay, I'll think of a concept and I'll, I'll sit down and discuss. And I thought of uh, the video you saw. So we created that video where I, the whole concept was that it'll be a blank canvas. So everything was just white. Um, and I start the video with like just the splashes, you know, like just some splashes of paint and color. And then Bacha is introduced. And then we were both playing with color. We are throwing color. And at the end of it, there is a big mural of a DJ that is formed. Um, and yeah, and Bacha was kind enough to write a special sort of rap version for that particular video because that was a different video. He already had launched his main video, but that was a different video. So he wrote a, a special verse uh, for it, uh, which was amazing. And yeah, it was it was a lot of fun to see him play with colors and, you know, uh, um, and just being on a set we were, we, where we were doing like a combination of music and art. There is a whole behind the scenes video where you can see all the bloopers and and all the fails that we had and we were throwing paints on each other. And <laughs> yeah, it was a fun, fun video. Okay. So you came back to television with Imagine That. How was the experience? Um... I, honestly, I don't feel I, I ever left television. Yes, I when I did television for almost a decade, and like I said, I when I saw my audience moving to other platforms, I decided that you know I should also spend a little more time um, you know on the platform and start creating content on uh, different platforms. And that's why that little switch happened. But I never wanted to leave TV or quit TV. Uh, it's just that. I had done television for over a decade, so I thought maybe let's try something new. Um, and also, after ten years, the format was the same. So you know, it's it's not exciting. I mean, we, we used to try different things, introducing new segments and things like that. But it was still the same format that we started with. I started the show in two thousand and four, and I think I left the channel two thousand twelve or fourteen. No, fourteen is when I started my YouTube channel. So I did it for very long. And that's why I decided to do YouTube. And while I was doing YouTube and Instagram and doing uh, digital content, Disney approached me and they said, we would like to, you know, um, um, create another show which revolves around upcycling and recycling, uh, similar to what I used to do on Mac. But now um, they said, we want to design it for the audience of today. So I could change the format. I could introduce a lot of tech and technology, you know, like I had a hologram watch and you were also doing digital stuff and things like that. So that was exciting. Uh, so that's why I decided, okay, maybe I'll design another show. Uh, and then I designed that for Disney. So it was great because, you know, YouTube is, uh, or digital content, you know, generally speaking, um, um, it's usually on a smaller budget, smaller scale, your team is small, but when you do television, like especially my show, uh, my team was around 80 people or more. You know, it's a four or five camera setup. So it's a different space. It's a different vibe. It's a different high. So it is very exciting to go back to doing television. But um, but yeah, I don't think I ever left. I was just waiting for the right opportunity to create something um, exciting and um, interesting. Also, um, you know, I don't think it has ever happened where two really competitive channels reached out mm. to the same host or same creative director to create similar shows on two different channels. So that also uh, made me feel very happy and I felt very proud that people respect and appreciate what I bring to the table. So, yeah. So uh, can you tell us something about your upcoming project, something new if you are planning? I am planning a um, couple of interesting things. Um, not very long back, I had, uh, I had, I had also created a property which was um, uh, a live show format. Like I had done television and digital, like, and most of my work is consumed um, through a screen. So I thought, why not create something that is uh, experienced live? And mm -hmm. I've all, I'm also known for these large scale um, installations that I do. Uh, and people love that when something is larger than life. So often enough, people ask me questions about that. You know, how much time did it take you to make and what materials did you use? Do you uh, do you have a workshop where you store it and how do you create it? So I thought, what if I bring that format into a live setting so people can just sit and watch me create all of this live on stage? That could be an exciting format. So we did that um, and I created Imaginarium, which was India's first traveling art show. 
um we did couple of shows in chennai and bangalore it was a huge hit so um i want to bring that back so i'm working on some ideas on how i can create another version of that and reach out to um you know my my audience and uh, bring to them something that is um consumed while they're just sitting and watching and no screens and no um what do you say no filters and no edits and just live magic happening on stage so that is coming up and come and few other interesting videos so yeah few other new series okay so tell me why goa why did you choose goa as your base <laughs> because i love goa um goa has always been like a home away from home even when i was in bombay uh, every time i would get a break from my shoot schedule i would just run to goa um because bombay or just the media industry is so hectic and i always wanted to run away from the hustle and bustle so i would come to goa and spend some time it was like a refresh button for me i love nature so i could spend a lot of time here you know just going for nature walks and spending time on the beach sure. um and every time i would come here you know it was just like a nice like uh like like a nice break where i could um uh, just like filter out everything and think more clearly and uh, it it was a it was a great space for me to even like plan things so i would come here and away from like the craziness and and the madness and the chaos and i could just spend time where i could think and plan what i want to do um next so it was always that space for me and then um, then uh, then i got married in goa my wife's uh, my wife is from goa so it was a natural sort of uh, shift for us when we decided to uh, leave bombay so yeah of course so please tell us about your stone cart series in goa yeah so like i said i love goa and um, i used to often go and this is right from like 2004 when i've been coming i would always come here and goa is so beautiful and so scenic my sketchbooks are just full of like sketches from goa and i was i would I was always sit down and you know just scribble like whether i was sitting at a shack i was going for a nature walk whether i would see like a water body or a beach or you know riding a bike somewhere um and often enough people will be like oh i love this sketch in your sketchbook can i just print it and can you make a postcard out of it and all often enough i would do that and i would give my sketches to my friends so when um, i got an opportunity to collaborate with the royal enfield and i was planning like a series um or like an idea for them um i thought of doing this where i would ride my back to bike to some exciting places and i would okay. sketch that and that postcard i would leave for any stranger to pick up you know it's almost like an art drop of sorts or like uh somewhat oh, wow. somewhat like a treasure hunt okay. um and i thought that would be interesting but um uh, Goa is also like you know man, unpredictable. Sometimes it rains, it drizzles, and this that. Sure. And doing just like something on paper, I thought might if somebody doesn't pick it up um, over time will get damaged. So I thought I have to make this on a material that is slightly more durable and more unique. And every time I would go ride, and I would just sit down in places that oh yeah, there are enough rocks and stones around. Why don't I just paint on one stone and just leave it there? uh and i thought that would be very interesting and very unique as an idea yeah so i started uh this whole series where i ride my bike and i go to different places and i pick up stones and i draw on them and uh, so it became instead of a postcard it became a stone card from goa and i leave it there with a little message behind that anyone who finds it it's there to keep um and yeah it's just to um spread happiness spread smiles and share Amazing. my work with others in a different way and i didn't know like you know when i was doing it i thought yeah it's an interesting idea uh, people often ask for my sketches my artwork so this is a great way to give them uh, like like give back sort of like you know give them my sketches and stuff um so it might work but i didn't know like i i the first stone card i did and i left it on the beach and i posted the story about it and my dms and my stories like i it was flooded with messages that where is it where is exactly people went there uh, shooting videos and saying it's not here i look for that spot um and it's others gone. were sending me messages saying why only stone cards from goa we want stone cards from delhi and bangalore and karnataka i said i am here right now i'm starting this series and maybe if i start traveling 
will do more. So that's how stone cards from Goa sort of originated. And everyone loves it and I love it too. Amazing, amazing. Very beautiful idea actually. Okay, so my last question to you. What would be your advice to the budding content creators? Uh, my advice to budding content creators... I mean, it might sound cliche, but I, I always say follow your passion. You know, because I truly believe that if you want to be the best at what you do, you know, you need to love what you do. Only then you can give in more than your 100% to it. You know, every single day, whether it's your time, your effort, you know, like they say that if you love what you do, then it doesn't seem like a job kind of thing. It is true, man. Like, I, I really believe that. And, and I think it's very important that figure out what you're passionate about and invest your time in it. You know, so find your passion and make it a habit. Do it every single day, you know, and you will see improvement. You will see. And I, I feel that, you know, if you invest your time into something, then you can truly be great at it and be yes. successful at it. And don't chase money. You know, money is just a byproduct of doing something good. If you go out and you're doing something that is good, that is unique, that is special, and people can take away something from that, you know, you will definitely make money. So I say just choose something that you really, really love and and, and make it a habit. Work on it. And there are no shortcuts. So just spend time and do it. Because, you know, I say this too. Like if most people, like I'll give you a very simple example. You, you want to build a six pack. You can't go to the gym just once in a week kind of thing. You know, you go one day and you say, oh, I didn't get a six pack. Obviously, you didn't get a six pack. You need to spend time. You know, you need to spend time in the gym. Similarly, you know, creativity or uh, is like a muscle that you need to spend time. So, yeah, figure out a passion, make it a habit, uh, do hard work and you will be successful. Okay. Rob, amazing, amazing ideas. Lot of creativity. Love talking to you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you for so this time for us. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. This was great. And uh, see you soon. Okay. Thank you so much.